please. <laughs> new product time. Oh, oh the sorry. new products are falling all over the place. Sorry. All right. Okay. All right. Lady Ada, we're gonna do some sw switcheroo here. Um, okay. Uh, hey, Waz, can you? Yep. Those you are the that. demos. Okay. That, uh, that's cool. Waz will help me. This that thing always falls over. Yeah. It's because it's down here. It's kind of crazy. Down all here. right. The first new product is. Flexible solar Flexi panel. Flexi solar, yeah, this Look is Look at cool. this. This is really, really, really neat. And uh, we'll go to the overhead in just a second. We want to check out these cool photos from John Janeer. Yeah. But, do you uh, know these? No, that can we'll go just, down there. Just, okay. okay. For it to fall down again in the future. Okay, sorry, I was giving myself some. All right. Okay, so this is to it. the overhead. So this is a film. Um, it's actually a very thin film solar cell. It's a uh, polycrystalline solar panel. And this is a one watt, six volt panel. And it's, uh, it's a really high quality panel in this um, really like durable weather and waterproof plastic. And then there's these solder points that are exposed on the back. So if you wanted to, uh, you could solder to these very easily and then you would epoxy it closed or, or even some gaff tape would probably be just fine. A waterproof it or duct tape would waterproof it. But it's a really nice, um, you know, outdoor flexible panel. There's this um, nice edging that you can sew through or, or staple or whatever. We wanted to carry a flexible solar panel. And um, unfortunately, flexible solar panels that are good quality are really expensive. But um, this is what we found. And we thought we'd start with one watt. And if it's popular, we'd get uh, higher wattages. But uh, we like it. It's nice. It's the plastic. No. I don't it's, know, but it's, it's, you know, it's whatever plastic that allows could, the... Could you puncture something. it in, in the clear plastic part and sew it onto something? Yeah, this, this as long as you don't sew through the, the panels itself, you can sew through the plastic, especially the edging. That's what I like yeah. about this one is that it, it's nicely edged and it's it's soft. You could sew through it with a, a yeah. fairly strong sewing machine. Could you flex it a little bit? Does it flex in all directions? I mean, is it... A, oh, yeah, you can flex it this way. I mean, this is... Yeah, what if you were to, like, oh, can, you, can it twist-ish a little bit? Can it... Yeah. yeah. I mean, Okay, all right. It. This is a flexible It kind of, you know, because of the geometry, it flexes best in this way. Yeah. And does and flexing can... change the output at all? I mean... No, but you just have to make sure that it's, it, it, you have as much of it exposed to sunlight as possible. Right. So it doesn't matter what the geometry is as long as you have sunlight exposure. Yeah, because what matters is the incident angle of the sunlight on the panel, right? So, so if you have it curved around it. and sun can only hit one side, you can, it's you not could, be um, You could um, bend it so much that it creases. I wouldn't do that, personally. Yeah, what's the bender you used to know? Like for six, six inches? recommended? Yeah. This, is, this seems like, you can kind of tell, you're like, oh, it's not creasing, but this is about, this feels yeah. good. You could probably do a little bit more, but this feels like it's not uh, upset. This is cool. I've not seen these around. I think we're the only ones selling these. Yeah, this is, this is, this just took us a long time to get, but I wanted to get something really good quality. This is pretty good. Okay. Quality. Next up, here are some photos. This is a new case for the Raspberry Pi from our friends at Pi Maroni. Yeah. The photos are really good on this. Yeah. Let's go to the overhead. It is a wood case. So it's a wood case. Thing. It's really lovely. It's laser cut and it's got five pieces of wood and it smells really good. Looks um, like birch ply maybe. Yeah, it's just some sort of plywood. It's nicely know. sealed. It's very nice. And um, yeah, and then you can have a GPIO cable come out here and you've got the, all the ports that you've always wanted. The ports you've come to uh, know and I'm going to skip back for one second because there's a question that came in because there's yeah. always a little bit of a delay. Can you um, uh, chain the solar panels together in parallel? Yeah, you can do. Okay. It's just like any other solar panel. Uh, okay. You might want to use a protection diode for each one. Okay. And Everything then, else, uh, check the product page first. Yeah. All right. And then, back uh, to the bike case. Clear, yeah, we also have tutorials on solar panels yeah. and stuff. Uh, clear bottom and clear top. It's just that the, it's the timber pie bow. Pie bow timber. For yeah. when you're doing your Raspberry okay. Pi fun adventures in Alaska. I don't know, I like it. All right. It's a good aesthetic. Yeah, it's cute. Next up, another Pi product. This is the Pi Glow, also from Pi Maroni. What is this thing? Oh, and look, it even fits inside the case if you want. Yeah. Oh my gosh. So what is this thing, Lady Ada? You know, oh, you know, well, let me get my screwdriver. One second, let me get my screwdriver. You can show that photo for a second. Oh, okay. can you grab me that bin that you just, uh, yeah, help me with? All right, so I'll continue to you continue looking show the photos of this while Lady Ada gets her screwdriver. Where's my screwdriver? Okay. Oh, here it is. Okay. Watch so. the action here as it happens. Yeah. Live engineering. Live. I thought I could uh, undo it with my fingers, but I can't. Okay. So you oh, can, can you, um, uh, get the camera out again. You can open up the um, pie bow. It works with any pie bow. I don't know what other cases it works with. It's kind of like designed for a pie bow. Um, but it's from Pie Maroni, and they just got a pick and place in like an oven and stuff. So is this so just a, an After Effects kit for your Raspberry Pi? It is, yeah. <laughs> it's like a, it's like a uh, ground oh. effects kit. Oh, there you go. Yeah. Alienware now has nothing on these guys. Wow, these are tough to undo. 
high tolerance? Yeah, these are, I mean, they're like perfect tolerance. So um, it's a little plug-in um, board and it has a, a, a um, 16 channel PWM driver on it. One second, I'm just gonna slide this out of the way. So you can um, plug it in here and the Pi's not on, so you're just gonna have to pretend like it's working. But you can plug it in and it fits in the Pi bow case. And, um, there you go. and uh, there's all these little LEDs in a nice spiral and um, they light up in pretty colors and they have um, some scratch code and they have some um, wiring, Pi wiring code. And they have, uh, that's cool. Some, I don't know, excuse me. They have Python code, wiring code, I think they had some Perl code, maybe even some shell code for controlling the I2C um, PWM driver to uh, make a fax. I don't know, I thought that's it was kind of cute. That's what this is? This is your LED yeah, driver? Yeah, there's a little LED driver here, a little, little black square is an LED driver, and then there's the LED. So each one is okay. individually controllable. Man, everyone's working with, that looks like an LFCSP. So everyone's yeah, doing fun this, with leadless packages. Though. All this stuff is, is, is a QFN now. Man, okay. It. So hard to rework. Next up, um, just a quick programming note here for everyone. These are back in stock. This is um, our NeoPixel rings. These went instantly. Um, we had them for like an hour and they all sold out, and then we made a bunch more, so those are back in stock. But that is not the only blinky thing I have to talk about. This is the NeoPixel 8x8. Yeah, I'll do that. Thank you. And yeah, this is our, our, our latest. We previewed this actually. And yep. then John here took some great photos of it. I have a little bit of video I want to show. Okay, show this video. You ready for this? Easy. This is really crazy. Ah. Oh, so good. yeah, it looks really good. Um, so this is the eight by eight matrix, and it's got sixty four LEDs, and it's actually like really warm um, from all this work it's doing. And you just have it running the demo. So yeah, each LED is individually addressable, but you only need one wire to control all of them. And it's cha they're chained down, and it even works with their Neo matrix code that we have. And on the back, there's these nice uh, gold tabs. You can, I, I designed this so that, you know, if you took multiple ones, you could tile them and they'll tile dimensionally perfect. Like you'll, they'll, they'll line up. But you won't see the seams. Well, I mean, you'll probably see it, but you won't, it won't be, no, the, the spacing won't be noticeable. Yeah. That cool. makes sense, right? So. Yeah, um, you won't have a visual gap around there the won't board. Be, there won't be a spacing difference because it's like, this is exactly one half of the spacing between these two. So this is as tight pitch as we could get it. And I really like it because it's like, you can get an eight by eight RGB matrix, but it won't be nearly as bright. You'd have yeah. to multiplex it. This is only one pin and it's like ready to go. How many watts? Um, this draws, I think this is drawing like a, an amp or maybe an amp and a half right now. So it can be up to like 10, 10 watts. It's pretty bright. I mean, we have a set dim set brightness setting in the Neo matrix and NeoPixel library. So you can, you can bring this down a lot. Um, but yeah, it's 24 bit color. Uh, Super sweet. So yeah, there's these tabs that I designed so that if you if you tile them, you can solder the tabs to make it more mechanically stable. And then uh, you can chain these, and there's some mounting holes around the edges. So yeah, super bright, eight by eight. Great job. And uses our awesome NeoPixel library. Yeah. Intense. So good that every, intensely bright. So, so good that everyone just uses this library. This library is like so popular. I see. I see it like on Kickstarter. I see it like on other company product pages. It's very, the best. Very nice of Phil you B. too. Release Rock that to the world. Okay. Pit your dragon. Next up, and uh, this next product is uh, also another one that's uniquely Adafruit, and something that only Lady Ada and K Town, K Town, and our team here can do. This is the CC three thousand Internet of Things Arduino Shield by Adafruit. Yeah. It is a Wi-Fi shield that does all sorts for of things. Under 40 bucks. It's under $40. Compare elsewhere to about with other Wi-Fi shields, you're looking at $89 or $69. Nope, ours is under 40 bucks. And it tweets. We got the library working, and this is a tweet. This is like the it. best thing ever. So, so, so for like years, people have been like, why don't you have a Wi-Fi shield? Why don't you have a Wi-Fi shield? And I've always said like, I just, I'm not read, not, it, 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 like nothing is good enough, right? And so finally, we found, um, a module that, man, I really wish we had good lighting here. Yeah, we're getting another <laughs> light soon. Um, it's like four years. I can't, can't get a light yet. Um, yeah. This is the uh, CC3000 shield. 
that we have based on the CC3000 module and we have a micro SD socket here and there's level shifting and there's a prototyping area and a reset button and, uh, and we have an onboard antenna. So this one has the onboard ceramic antenna, which is this little white thing here, which is actually a pretty good antenna. Um, and we might have a version in the future that has a UFL as well. But um, the antenna works really well. And uh, you know, this is the one that I use. So it's, it's, um, it's soldered. And you know, I plugged it onto a Mega and actually it worked. I never tested it with a Mega, but it, it does work with a Mega if you use the um, ICSP connector. Um, but it's, it's right now we're only kind of being like, hey, it's for Uno use only and uh, working on porting the library, but it's, uh, it's a really good shield and it works. We have examples for TCP, UDP, grabbing stuff from a web server, um, setting the time, tweeting via the Twitter API directly. Yeah. So you don't need an inter interfacing website. So yeah, it's all good. Yeah, Internet of Things, Yay. we did it. And uh, this is you know kind of an advanced thing, so if you're not um, ready to, to dig in, um, you know, wait wait for a bit, but uh, every day we're doing more stuff with this, and it's uh, the best and only one out there, it's certainly at this price. And uh, yeah, for years everyone said, oh, why don't you carry the Wi-Fi shield? And when the Arduino Wi-Fi shield came out, why don't you guys carry it? It's like, well, it's like, it's, it was 80, it's $89, it's really expensive. And we thought, um, is there, it, there's gotta be a way to have this so it's, you know, yeah. under 40 bucks. And uh, you worked really hard on it, so congratulations. Yeah. Hopefully Lady it's Ada. visible, I don't know if you can yeah. see it. Yeah, we also have that beautiful photo. Okay, with the all that, nice. that is that's awesome. new products.